I'm Dave. And I'm Andrew, and we are the IB English Guys. Today, we would like to continue on our series with artificial intelligence, working with students and teachers, showing you how to harness this power and really leverage this in the classroom. Mr. Giles, what are we talking about today? Today, we're talking about data. We're talking about vast amounts of data, how we can take that data and put it into the bot and have it synthesize that data and give us information. It's so important. It's yeah. such a powerful tool. Mr. Jobs, I can think of numerous of examples, whether I have 20 or 30 paragraphs I want to look for patterns or if I want to look at you know other aspects of student work and just think about how I can provide them the best feedback. Having AI synthesize data for us is incredibly powerful. Uh, let's talk about one of our use cases. Uh, if you watch our last video, we were kind of working on Socratic dialogue and we anticipated our students would have some trouble. What were some of the scenarios we anticipated and what were some of the ways out we provided? Yeah, great. So we were thinking about it, the Socratic dialogue is that engagement with the bot where we're having it generate some information for us and, and get us to think about questions. So if we, we gave a scenario where if the AI was providing too much information, then here's some prompts that you can you can tell it to actually shorten the responses. Yeah, maybe the information was too complex. So we asked, we gave the students some recommended prompts to sort of tone it down to make it more comprehensible. We also had some pathways for, hey, this learning's not engaging. What are some ways to spice it up? We thought that would be enough. Oftentimes as teachers, we think that we what we provided would be enough. What did we discover, Mr. Giles? Well, we discovered that some students still struggle with their engagement with the bot and they struggle with their own process of working with that. So we have, let's say we have, you know, 25 students in the classroom and they've all engaged with the, with AI. Then we have, you know, upwards of like 10 pages of data per student. That's that's, that's, that's on, on Mr. Giles, are you going to pour through 250 pages of data? No, I can't. But I want those, I want that information. I want to see the patterns in their work. So just to review uh, the assignment we gave the kids explicitly, uh, what was it, Mr. Giles? What did we ask them to do? We asked the students to, to complete a, a 15 minute AI learning session uh, where they were doing that at home, where they were engaging and, and completing that task. Then we asked the students to actually share the link, the AI link with us so that we could again look at their look at their engagement look at what they did um and then we would go to those links and we would be able to look at their look at their yeah engagement. and when we looked at that engagement we noticed things right away we thought oh i see where the student broke down then we would look at another data set and say oh that student did something different it was taking a long time uh, so finally we made a decision we started to copy and paste all of those learning sessions into chat gpt now that took a couple of attempts because of the limited field that you can put text in there. But after about four or five entries, we had all of the student data uploaded. And what was the prompt we gave ChatGPT, Mr. Giles? Yeah, we, we needed to tell it like, please look for patterns in the student data to hear your recommendations and how I can instruct students to interact with ChatGPT on this writing test. Yeah, so that whole process of copying and pasting the data took about five minutes. And this is what we got, Mr. Giles, for output. We have an amazing list, which we, of course, formatted uh, of 10 useful tips to give students when interacting with ChatGPT. Any favorites that you see in here as you look through there? Yeah, I love that. Ask for research guidance. If you need sources for your topic, ask ChatGPT for recommendations on where to find information. Now, it's really nice. Yeah, now a caveat, you want to make sure you're using ChatGPT4 or something else that has access to the internet. You always want to make sure that those sources are real. But if you're connected to the internet, that shouldn't be a problem, right? And another tip that I really enjoy that I think we need to work with students is to be patient. Uh, we know that people are used to being on their phones and getting things instantaneously. We need to be patient. We need to slow down and work with the bot. Uh, anything else that you notice in here, Mr. Giles? Well, we want to think about like feedback loops and think about the significance of like having that feedback loop to actually like reflect and think. Yeah. And I yeah, that's what we, we've been saying repeatedly in these videos is the importance of, of doing just that. Exactly. So folks, we hope you understand the power of what we've shown you here, the ability to enter paragraphs or chats or any other student data, ask the bot to synthesize the data, look for patterns. This is powerful formative feedback. This is how you move students further in learning. We really appreciate you watching the video. Stay with us. We'll give you more AI tips and how you can engage your students in personalized learning. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thanks, guys.